working on a large Stuart model steam plant. This is part 18, modifications to the exhaust piping and the roof of the chimney. Thanks to the excellent Amazon Prime service, my pipe bending tools arrived the next day. And it bends a quarter inch pipe, just like this. It also bends 5 sixteenths and 3 eighths of an inch diameter pipe too. The bend isn't perfect, but it's near enough for rock and roll and near enough for what I need it to do. This bent piece of pipe will need cutting down to go from the condenser to the chimney with the help of three PM Research elbows. This is just one of two bandsaws that I have. They're very old, but both work very well. This one needs a new blade fitting, which is well overdue. It's a Burgess bandsaw, but this one's sold under a different name. The design is slightly different on this one to the old one. Most of it is identical. It's the blade guides that are different. These bandsaws are great. They use quarter turn latches to get the plate off the front, so you can never lose the screws as they're captive to the outer plate. I think before I change the blade, I'll give it a quick vacuum up and clean it. Fitting the blade is too simple to go into. You fit it round the pulleys, adjust the tension of the top part of the pulley, and then using the quarter turn latches, put the cover plate back on. Then you can cut whatever you need within reason. I've cut this piece of copper pipe to this shape. I'm giving the pipe a quick squirt of WD-40 and I'm going to put a drill shank down the middle of the pipe which will stop the copper distorting as I cut the thread. This is a quarter by 40 thread to suit the thread in the elbows. This job is done by hand and entirely by eye. I keep backing it off just to clear the swarf. It's most important to keep the piece of copper tubing centralised in the die. Normally I would thread the copper first, I would put the piece of straight copper in the chuck in the lathe, place the drill shank down the centre and use a tailstock die holder to cut the thread. Then I would cut the part and bend it to shape, but I thought instead I would show this method. It's quite straightforward, you don't need a lot of pressure to cut the copper, it's very soft. To be honest the most difficult part is removing the drill shank from the copper pipe once you've cut the thread. I couldn't do it by hand, I had to put the drill shank in the lathe chuck and remove it that way. Now it's time to fit the first of the elbows. This simply screws onto the thread, and it's most important to make sure that the elbow screws all the way onto the thread. And when it looks like this, it's time to silver solder a union on the other end. A quick warning though, always put the union nut on first. Sometimes I still foul up and forget to put the union nut on, but this time I've done it right. After the silver soldering process, I cleaned up the pipe using a piece of Scotch Brite followed by some Brasso. I could of course have put it in the acid bath but that's currently in use with another job. And while the body parts are dissolving, I'm going to use a ruler to estimate the length of pipe I need to stick out from the chimney so when I fit the elbows and the other pieces of pipe, everything lines up. This is a job for the calibrated eye, and to get that, you need to practice. In this clip, I'm going to thread one of the pieces of copper in the lathe. First of all, I drill down the centre because it's a little bit tight. Then I'll leave the 3 drill bit in place and thread the copper. This drill bit serves two purposes. The first purpose is to allow me to clamp it very tightly in the three-jaw chuck without crushing the copper. And the second purpose is to support the piece of copper being threaded because that's stuck out of the end of the chuck. You can do this job without putting anything down the centre of the copper, but it's a good idea to do so. If you don't, you will distort the copper tubing with the three jaws and you won't get a very good thread anyway. All I do now to remove the drill is put the tailstock chuck back in the tailstock clamp it onto the drill bit and withdraw it. Here's a close-up of the thread, and as you can see, it's not bad at all. Try it yourself, it's not as easy as it looks. What I'm doing in this clip is just checking the alignment between the two points. I've just threaded yet another elbow using a quarter by 40 tap. Once again, I'm using the ruler to confirm the alignment, and it doesn't look too bad. I'll assemble the parts and see what they look like. In this clip, the straight part was too long. So I re-threaded the end a little bit longer and cut off the excess. And now once again it's time for a test assembly to see if everything's okay. Originally the exhaust pipe came out of the condenser, went round the back of the boiler and up to the chimney, all nice and curvy and bent by hand but it didn't look good. And here's the finished exhaust pipe. This is going to be quite visible on the plant and I think it looks really good with the elbows, it's very steam-like. Much better than being hidden away round the back. And now it's time to test the pipe to see if it works. There's still a problem with the duplex pump, but with the water bypass valve open, it works fine. 
and as you can hear now the exhaust noise is a nice fluey sound and it makes a lot more noise when the engine starts because there are two one inch bore cylinders exhausting into this small pipe. So the volume of compressed air is considerable, it flattens the compressor in no time at all but then again my very quiet compressor is very small. I've had my compressor for ages, it's really good for setting valve time because it doesn't make a lot of noise. The compressor part of the compressor is very similar to a fridge compressor, it runs silently and fills the air reservoir beneath that looks a little bit like a UFO. As I mentioned in the last episode, very shortly someone's going to bring me a locomotive which needs some kind of surgery. So after I made this video, I moved this engine off the bench and put it on one of the other benches. I will revisit this video series in due course. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.